morning we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 2, Chapter 6, Text uh, 25. Alright, we'll just uh, read what's written there. And I can go back. Vastunyo sadaya sneha Vastunyo sadaya sneha Rasaloham rido jalam Rasaloham rido jalam Richo yajam si samani Richo yajam si samani Richo yajum si samani Chatur hotram chasatama Vastun yo sadayasneha Rasaloham rido jalam Richo yajum si samani Chatur hotram chasatama Word for word, Vas, vastuni, vastuni utensils, utensils. Osadaya, osadaya grains, grains. Sneha, sneha clarified butter, clarified butter. Rasa loham rida, rida honey gold and earth, earth. jalam water, water. richa the Rig Veda, Yajumsi. The Yaju Veda, Samani, the Sama Veda, Chatu Hotram, <coughs> four persons conducting the performance, Cha, all these, Satama, O most pious one. Translation Other requirements are utensils, grains, clarified butter, honey, gold earth, water, the Rig Veda, Yaju Veda, Sama Veda and four priests to perform the sacrifice. The previous verse was Teshu Yagyasya Pasava Savanas Pataya Kusha Idam Cha Deviyajanam Kalas Charu Gunan Vita For performing sacrificial ceremonies one requires sacrificial ingredients such as flowers, leaves, straw along with the sacrificial altar and at suitable time. We can't have it too close. We have to see them. So, and the, the next verse was the translation was other requirements are utensils, grains, clarified butter, honey, gold, earth, water, the Rig Veda, Yaju Veda, Sama Veda, and four priests to perform the sacrifice. Therefore, to perform a sacrifice. Uh, successfully, at least four expert priests are needed. One who can offer hota, one who can chant ugata, one who can, kill, uh, one who can kindle the sacrificial fire without the aid of separate fire, advaryu, and one who can supervise, brahma. Such sacrifices were conducted from the birth of brahma, the first living creature and were carried on till the reign of Maharaj Yudhisthira. But such expert Brahmana priests are very rare in this age of corruption and quarrel, and therefore in the present age only the yajna of chanting the holy name of the Lord is recommended. The scriptures enjoin, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama Iva Kevalam Kalo Nascheva 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 Gati Anyata. <coughs> Uh, this um, yeah, so these uh, yagyas of course sahaja gya pacha shishta puru bacha pacha pati anena pasha vishadvam esha bau shvista kama duk anad bhavanti bhudani bhajanan anasambhava jagya pavati bhajan jagya kama sabud bhavani these are uh, 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 yagyas this was all coming originally from the Supreme Personality of the Godhead. Uh, we know the uh, creation has been mentioned many times, the expansions and so on and so forth. 
uh, and uh, the opportunity to uh, come out of the entanglement is here in the performance of these yagyas. Uh, now the yagyas, as is said by Lord Krishna, are born from Varnashram system. Unfortunately in the present age we don't have Varna and Ashrama. But if there was Varna and Ashram, it means the social orders, Brahmana, Chatriya, Vaishya, Sudra, and the Ashramas, Brahmachari, Grihastavana, Prasta, Sanyas, automatically included in that system uh, would be the, the uh, so many uh, uh, prescriptions and so many uh, uh, activities to follow. And performance of yagya, of course, is one. So automatically, with Vanashram, there would be these performances of yagya. These were given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as I said, to come out uh, either gradually or, or, or very directly or, or, or almost immediately come out of the entanglement of the, of the uh, material, uh, material world. Uh, so uh, uh, these are very important. It is, it, they're not much uh, understood, although in every bona fide religion of the world there's always some sort of uh, procedure, some sort of ritual. And uh, uh, these yagyas are meant <coughs> to show gratitude. Devan bhavya tadena teva bhavyantava parasparam bhavya tasya parama vapsyata. The, the demigods are supplying all the necessities of life. The earth is supplying the necessities of life. So one offers gratitude <coughs> to the devas, uh, to Mother Earth, and uh, one tries to satisfy them, one tries to please them, because if they are pleased, they will, they will be able to provide so much. The ultimate beneficiary of all these performances, of course, Bhuktaram Jagatapa Samsava Loka Mahishwam Surajam Savabhuta Gatpamam Santi Mrichati is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vishnu. <clears throat> so he is the ultimate beneficiary, although in the performance of these yagyas, uh, the other demigods' names are mentioned and worshipped, but the ultimate beneficiary is the Supreme Lord. So uh, these are performed to show the gratitude, to please them, uh, and it's not that the devas need our worship, nor does the Supreme Personality of Godhead need our worship. Uh, you know, our offerings of fruits, flowers, uh, they are not needed by the devas. They are living in the heavenly planets. They are living fabulously wealthy and luxurious lives. As I mentioned last week, they live for uh, you know, you know, millions of years. They don't age. They don't suffer. Uh, there are some demigods. Practically, they're whole, they're, they're youthful. Well, all the demigods they're youthful throughout their whole life. Some demigods just in the last year. There's some faint semblance of getting a little bit more older than they, as they uh, uh, die. So it's, it's not that they need, you know, uh, your bananas or your apples <laughs> or even your gold. <clears throat> they don't need fla your flowers. <laughs> they are living in the heavenly planets. Uh, now, th that's the demigods. And, and imagine the Supreme Personality of Godhead. What does he need from us? He is supplying all these things, unlimitedly. Uh, but all these things are for our benefit, to establish us in the proper mentality, to establish us in the proper mood, to show gratitude. Yeah, we come to this world, we're puffed up. We're puffed up, we think we're the Lord and Master of everything, in, in an overt way or, 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 or in a very covert way. We have this attitude. So these things are meant to show gratitude to others. Uh, we, we do not live in this world uh, we, and when we create everything else, everything comes from us. We, we don't need help from any, anyone else or anything else. Uh, we need help. We need the earth. We need uh, wind. We need rain. We need sun. We need all these things. Uh, so uh, um, just to show gratitude, yeah, you can do these types of performances to show gratitude, to worship them, to satisfy them. If they are pleased with you, uh, and this is the secret of success, if you satisfy them by following these things and please them, then they will supply all the necessities uh, to mankind. Now, Prabhupada mentions in 
throughout Bhagavad Gita and especially the Karma Yoga in the third chapter, how man actually, if they follow Varnashram, they perform these yagyas, can live a relatively comfortable life uh, free from, uh, 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 you know, anxiety. Of course, it, being in the material world, the concomitant factor is you have to be in some sort of anxiety, especially man. Uh, in this world, we have short lives, and especially in Kali Yuga. So there'll always be anxiety, but relatively free. And now we're seeing, of course, you know, so many anxiety, so much distress, so much suffering. Uh, you know, we have to walk around wearing masks, we can't go anywhere. <laughs> These are just some of the latest things, uh, fighting and so on and so forth, we all know. Uh, so, but, but, but even in the Kali Yuga, uh, it's not, it doesn't need to be like that. It doesn't need to be like that. The yagyas, if the yagyas are followed. But of course, as described here, uh, these types of yagyas that were performed in the past, uh, uh, you know, so many things are needed to perform them. Uh, all these ingredients are needed, uh, a favorable, uh, uh, you know, day, uh, uh, time of the year, time of the day, and experts in now here it is mentioned, you know, if one wants to do yagya, especially uh, like in the previous times, uh, one needs all these types of priests to be there. Uh, um, expert priests are needed to make sure the yagya is successful. Uh, you're, you're trying to please the Supreme Personality of God, you're trying to please the devas by the performance of these yagyas. Uh, you're offering things and uh, you have to know how to, how to do that. And so the, the persons have to be trained. There are specific uh, procedures to be followed, mentioned in, in, in the different, uh, here is mentioned the Yaju Veda, the Rik Veda, uh, the, the Sama Veda, uh, and, and, and so on, the Atava Veda. Uh, so you have to know which mantras in which Veda are meant for this particular result of this particular Yagya. So you need someone who's expert in understanding that. One, and, and, and then not understanding these things and then putting them into practice to, to, to do a yagya. To do a yagya. One who knows how to offer the ingredients in a certain order that, you know, to make sure the, the right ingredients, offer them in a certain order, uh, all, all these types of things. Uh, one who can chant uh, the mantras. Here is mentioned the hota. The Udgata, one who knows how to chant the mantras, you know, there's certain mantras to be chanted. You have to know which ones. You're trying to please this deva, you don't want to chant another mantra for another deva. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, chant it wrongly. Uh, chant it wrongly. And so, uh, you know, lighting the, the yagya, another, another expert uh, uh, Brahman would be needed. This was mentioned previously. Uh, 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 in yesterday's class by Mani Bandha Prabhu who uh, described about the, the expertise of the Brahmana who could light the fire separately by mantra. And then you need one Brahma who could uh, uh, supervise that everything was going on. This one, this one over here who's offering the ingredients, yes, he's, he's, everything's going on, yes, he's doing it correctly. And these, these Brahmanas over here are chanting uh, the mantras, that, yes, that, that's the correct ones, yeah, and, and they're pronouncing it correctly. There's all sorts of pronunciation also. Also inflictions in the tone of your voice, upward and downward, all sorts of things. It's not, uh, these are uh, uh, some things that you, that the, the, the Brahmanas learn from when they're children. They go to the Guru Kul and they learn these things, how to do these things. Uh, and, and, and so someone needs to oversee all these different functions, make sure they're going on. And that, so in other words, this one has to be learned in all the areas, and he has to oversee all that. Uh, so uh, 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 now, uh, uh, Prabhupada, of course, uh, mentions here that uh, we're, you know, it's very rare to find this type of expertise, you know, amongst the Brahmana community these days. Uh, one is, have they had the training? And the other is, it's Kali Yuga, there's a lot of corruption uh, and, and, and uh, quarrel. And, and you know, these Brahmanas, they need to be in the mode of goodness. They need to be in the Sattva Guna. 
So in the age of Kali, it's very difficult to remain in the Sattva Guna. We find those who were born in the Brahmana families, uh, even in the holy dharms, you know, you visit many holy dharms, they're engaged in business practice, they're making money, they're, they're doing so many things. They're not doing many the Brahminical activities. Uh, they're doing other activities. Because of just the atmosphere of the age, uh, one is almost forced to engage in certain act they have a certain mentality so it's not only knowing these things your mind and your whole being has to be in a certain mood or mode as we say sattva guna because you're the one offering on behalf uh, the yajuman you're offering on behalf of the, that, that person who has sponsored the yajna someone has sponsored the young a group has sponsored the yajna so these ones are offering uh, you know, on behalf. Uh, so someone who's representing you who on, on your behalf is going to uh, meet the prime minister or the president or something like that, and they're you know they're drunk or they're dishevelled and they don't know how to talk properly. Uh, it's not going to make a very good impression. So they have to be the, your representative has to be appropriate. So these brahmanas, they have to not only know these things, they have to be... So therefore Prabhupada makes mention here of, of the, uh, the effect of the Kali Yuga on these qualified brahmanas. Uh, and so it's very rare. He does say there, there may be some who I remember uh, in Vrindavan when we uh, uh, opened uh, the Krishna Balaram temple and uh, I was there and uh, <clears throat> Prabhupada had wanted to open it earlier but it got delayed and construction delays. So it was 1975 and, uh, and uh, Prabhupada actually mentioned that we can do ourselves simply by chanting Hare Krishna we can install the deity. But because the people are uh, uh, used to uh, elaborate functions and they, and they may criticize that this is a western thing and they may not accept. So uh, it was organized that uh, Brahmanas from South India who were very expert. I remember um, Yaso, Yaso Dhanandan Swami was one who uh, went to find these Brahmanas. There was uh, some other devotees also. They, they uh, uh, sourced these very expert Brahmanas and they came and uh, they did the yajna for quite a number of days. Prabhupada wanted us to have kirtan simultaneously and he wanted us to have 24 hour kirtan. I remember we, we would go, you know, I remember one of my sessions was 11 till 2. <laughs> 11 to 2 in Kirtan in the temple room in Krishna Balaram in the temple there. <clears throat> so that was a tough time. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, we'd go through it. So Prabhupada won a 24 hour Kirtan plus the, the Yagya was going on. Uh, and they were doing all sorts of uh, rituals and so on and so forth. And then they, and they, they, uh, uh, there was one who was overseeing the others. I saw that. One, one Brahmana was overseeing the activities of all the others. So they were very traditional South Indian Brahmana. And uh, Prabhupada was very satisfied. And, uh, and also the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. Now here, <coughs> Prabhupada, of course this has been mentioned many times, that the qualification of the the, the, uh, the the Brahmins. Also the ingredients uh, to perform these types of yajyas. Uh, some things are mentioned, flowers are usually easy, you know, easy, you know, honey is mentioned here, ghee. Uh, you know, these things are, you know, uh, for the common person, uh, not so, uh, you know, they're not so easy to acquire. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I know in uh, Bali, for example, um, the Brahmanas, uh, they charge a lot of money to do the uh, yajyas. They charge exorbitant amounts to do the yajyas. And the poor people, they can't afford. You know, if there's a death in the family, for example, they want to have the, the ceremony and everything for the departed uh, soul. Uh, the, 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 the ceremony, the brahmanas charge so much that the poor people, they have to wait till a few others in the area have died. And then between all of them, they can get the money together to bring the brahmanas to have the ceremony. So they have two or three together. <laughs> So they can pay. This is not good that the Brahmin is actually asking a fee. This should be done by Dakshina. Dakshina. Dakshina means whatever 
one can give. The brahmanas should be uh, supported, uh, the ingredients should be uh, purchased by those who are organizing, and then the brahmana comes, and then at the end the dakshina is given. Not that there's a, a set fee, that's not, that's not appropriate. So ingredients themselves, honey, you know honey is not is expensive, ghee is expensive. Someone told me the other day, I think Vasu told me it's like $120 for like eight kilos of ghee or something like that these days. You know, so it's super expensive. And I remember in the early days we used to buy like the, we used to buy not eight kilos, we used to buy those big drums. <laughs> and in the early, early days we used to make our own because we didn't know you could get the ghee. And so we'd uh, use the unsalted butter and uh, and then you'd boil it down and take off the fat and so on. And you'd make the ghee, very wonderful way to make ghee. Then, you know, when you, when the, the aroma was, I don't know if we still do it, but we used to do it here in the early days. And then we, we had the wood fire, at the, the wood stove, the big wood stove. Anyway, we used to do it and it, at, at, the aroma was like, it smelled like gulab jamans cooking. It was very sweet. So we used to make, but then we found out, someone found out that the, the butterboard actually uh, uh, had ghee. Uh, that the uh, 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 it was used because it was fairly cheap, and uh, and we showed it to Prolpart, and he very much liked it. Especially also the New Zealand ghee was even better still. The New Zealand ghee, uh, the Australian ghee also. And we and I remember one year we Prolpart asked that we bring a lot of the Australian and New Zealand ghee to Maipo. And I remember a, a whole bunch of us from all the temples, we carried the ghee on the plane, <laughs> and we used to buy these big drums. Uh, I don't think they were, they were, eight kilos are just like this big, right? Like, this, these were drums, we used to buy drums. And I remember paying like $17 a drum. <laughs> there was so much milk and butter in those days that, you know, they, they had a whole stockpile. And we always wondered why they, the, but the, the, the dairies had those. And, and actually we found out later it was for the biscuits. No, now they don't use it, but in the old days the, the biscuit companies, used, they used to use that to make biscuits. So that's why they, they made it in such huge quantities. Uh, so anyway, we were able to get it and, and Prabhupada very much liked it, he, you know, we, because we cooked the ghee when Prabhupada. And then we, he asked us to cook the ghee and I remember carrying in the ghee to Prabhupada's room, he was sitting there, big smile on his face, and he asked us to stack them all in the in the corner, and then I remember Madhavisa said, Prabhupada, what do you do, will you just distribute all this ghee to all the temples in India? And then he said, mm, no, I will sell it to them. <laughs> 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 they will have to pay and we can use the mo money here in my pool. <laughs> I thought I was always thinking like that. But, so, so, but ghee now, everything is so expensive. Honey also was used to be very cheap uh, in this country, but now it's super expensive. And uh, there's a shortage of honey all over the world, I heard. Uh, that uh, you know, and, uh, and it's becoming more and more so. So you know, just the ingredients, uh, you know, to get the, the necessary ingredients uh, uh, is, is not so easy. So therefore, Prabhupada says, and it's been said many times before, it's not recommended because of the brahmanas, because of the ingredients, because of you know, not being expert. These types of yagyas. Uh, <clears throat> are not recommended and therefore Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nashteva 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 Gatiyanya. Very famous verse. This is from the Briya Naradiya Purana and this is uh, quoted also uh, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after he got initiated when he came back uh, he was engaging in pastime, chanting and dancing and, and uh, just uh, at uh, Srivas Thakur all night, Kiritan, and just going around on Sankatan parties and so on and all of the devotees were like that. So he was just chanting and dancing. And one time there's one story in this particular section of Chaitanya Charitamrita where, um, <coughs> where the Lord uh, was nearby the house of uh, Srivas Thakur. He went to the, uh, the place of um, uh, Sukhambara, Sukhambara Brahmachari. Sukhambara Brahmachari uh, was a very intimate uh, associate of uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, it previously, uh, some say he was uh, formerly in Krishna Leela, one of the uh, uh, wives of the Yagik Brahmanas. 
uh, and others say, uh, and Lord Chaitanya himself says, previously you, used to, you came, you were, we were friends when we were in the school, and formerly he was Sudama, Brahmana. And he remember he had that story if he came to Dwarka and he offered Krishna some chip rice. So uh, Sukhambara Brahmachari uh, <clears throat> was very always in ecstasy and always telling stories of Krishna and the coward boys and so on. And uh, he was always going around begging and begging. He was in so much in ecstasy, he was crying, but he was always begging for arms and he would go to different houses and uh, he would like to collect all different things and he would like to collect rice. So one time he came in front of um, Lord Chaitanya. He, he just had, a, he had just con uh, uh, collected some raw rice. But then when Lord Chaitanya saw him, he uh, was so much in ecstasy just to see him because he was very affectionate to Sukhambara Brahmachari. And uh, he just took the, snatched the bag of rice and then just opened it and started eating the raw rice. And some devotees say, but, but Lord Chaitanya, that's just a raw rice. And, uh, but Lord Chaitanya just kept eating it. <laughs> so he was in ecstasy. And after he finished eating the raw rice, uh, he was in ecstasy. And he explained about this chanting. And at that time, he quoted this verse from Brihan Naradiya Purana. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nascheva, 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 Gati Anyata. In the age of Kali, there is no other means, no other means, no other means for self realization than chanting the holy name, chanting the holy name, chanting the holy name of Lord Hari. The Lord Chaitanya said this to Suklambara Brahmachari <coughs> in, his, in his own ecstasy. Uh, and, and, and so uh, this is a very f famous verse. And it was Lord Chaitanya who introduced this chanting and dancing. He introduced the Sankatan movement, the Sankatan Yagya. The Sankatan Yagya. So this is prescribed uh, uh, um, in this age. The Sankatan Yagya. So this has been mentioned many times about the chanting. Now, we'll just read a little bit here because there's a very interesting section now. Uh, in the, from the Bhagavatam, we learned that you know it's very rare to find the, the qualified brahmanas, the ingredients, and all these types of things. So therefore, it's recommended about the chanting. And and so uh, here now, but if one wants to get the benefit of the chanting, there are certain things to. That's considered the the, the yagya for this age. And then kali kali name rupe Krishna avatara namahaita haya sava jagat nishtara. In the age of Kali, the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, is the incarnation of Lord Krishna. Simply by chanting the holy name, one associates with the Lord directly. Anyone who does this is certainly delivered. And I think I've mentioned before, in one lecture at the Melbourne Town Hall, Prabhupada was asked at the end a question, and uh, this uh, uh, person obviously had read uh, uh, the Bhagavad Gita a little bit, because he actually said that, uh, he said, your grace, he said that, uh, in Bhagavad Gita said that uh, uh, Krishna comes in every age. So how has he come now in this age? And uh, I, I was expecting Prabhupada to say he's come in the form of Lord Chaitanya. But Prabhupada said he has come in the form of his name. He has come in the form of his name, the name Krishna, Hare Krishna. In the name, that sound vibration is the incarnation uh, for this age of Kali. This is how everyone will be liberated uh, in the age of Kali. So, <clears throat> so simply by chanting, one directly associates with Krishna. And here, it is mentioned by Lord Chaitanya, he's talking to Sukhambara. He's saying that this Harinam, 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 Eva Kevil, this, uh, this is repeated three times. And this is, uh, uh, the reason for this is that just for ordinary persons who don't understand so much about these types of things. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it, it, repetition is good, you know, because uh, our minds don't grasp things very easily. So therefore we have to hear it a few times. Uh, you know, so, you know don't, don't forget to do this. Did you do that? And then you have to ask, did you do it? <laughs> did you do it? <laughs> so we have to hear it again. So, so emphasize, this emphasizes the chanting of the Holy Spirit so that people, uh, especially ordinary people, may take it seriously. Take it seriously. <clears throat> what uh, someone may think, what, just chanting this name? 
This chanting and dancing replaces all these elaborate yogas and mantras and brahmanas come and fire and all these things like that just by chanting and dancing around the place. You know, that supersedes that. How can this be? But no, here is said that, no, no, this is emphatically stressed. Uh, now, <coughs> proper, uh, rather, Lord Chaitanya goes on and he says here, that in this age, it's not a statement of pride, it's a, just a statement of reality. Now, some people think when, when these things are quoted, the devotees quote these types of verses. Well, this is a statement of pride, excluding all other things to, to, to the inclusion of your process and, and no other. But no, no, this is just a statement of reality. You, the other things are there. You, some may be able to, uh, expert who can do them, but it's very rare. So, but if one actually wants to get the benefit of advancing on the spiritual path, then do this chanting. Now, but to do the chanting and to... Now, anyone can chant. Anyone can chant the Hare Krishna mantra, but to keep chanting, therefore we have our Shikshashtakam. Uh, here at Lord Chaitanya's, Trina Haite Ni Chahana Sabda Labe Nama. Either chant the holy name always, one should be humbler than the grass in the street, devoid of all desire for personal honor, but should be ready to offer respectful obeisances to others. Uh, so, uh, in, in the next verse, he says, uh, one should practice forbearance like that of a tree. Even if rebuked or chastised, he should not say anything to others to retaliate. So if one wants to keep chanting, in other words, one has to remain humble. If one becomes puffed up and commits offences, Krishna will withdraw and, and then one will not be able to keep the chanting. One may start the chanting, uh, but keeping the chanting. Sometimes it is seen that devotees come, they are very enthusiastic for a while, uh, but then after a while they wane. Uh, and they sometimes they go away altogether. Sometimes in the early days we used to call the, these ones like shooting stars. They come, they burn bright for a while, and then they, they're gone. Whatever happened, uh, never to be seen again, type of thing. <laughs> so I mean, it's good that they came, but if one wants to really gain the benefit, one has to the whole life be engaged in the chanting. And, and, and so to do that you have to be of this mood and, and later on uh, uh, Lord Chaitanya says one should string this mantra like a necklace around the neck in other words it's always there just like a necklace is always there it's hanging there it's not going anywhere it goes everywhere you go uh, and, and when you see it you're reminded that there's the necklace so this chanting should be like that. The attitude towards chanting should be like that. It should be always with you, always do the chanting. And you have to practice this forbearance. You have to practice this, uh, uh, you know, don't expect honor. Uh, <clears throat> yet you should offer respects to others. Don't expect respect. So someone might think, well, okay, I'm, I'm not going to expect any respect, and, but you know, I'm not going to give it either. If they don't respect me, I won't respect them. <laughs> All right, I'm not asking for respect, but I won't give any respect either, no. So, uh, uh, so one shouldn't be like that. That's also self-absorbed. You know, no, we shouldn't be self-absorbed type personalities. We have to be Krishna-absorbed. So all these are subtle things of the mind, you know. I mean, you, know, you can be, you know, be humble. You can get puffed up about thinking yourself humble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most humble. I remember Prabhupada said to one disciple, you're not the most anything. Krishna is the most. <laughs> so we think I'm the most humble. Uh, you know. So no, one has to... But, so this is not eaten. Now Prabhupada actually says here, in uh, one purport, he says this, Tarora Pisahishnana, just like Ashikshay, this forbearance, a tolerance, just like the tree, uh, even if it is drying up and dying, it does not ask anyone for anything. It doesn't protest. Now, this practice of forbearance is, is very difficult. Very, very, it's not not easy to be like that. Don't retaliate. Someone does something to you, you want to do something back. You know. Or quite often we say, you know, well, they started it. <laughs> we used to always say that as kids. Well, 
He started it. <laughs> right? So that justifies you doing something, right? You know, so, uh, but no, the devotee can't be like that even. Even if they started it, you shouldn't do anything. Of course, if they're doing something to the temple or they're doing something to someone else, we shouldn't idly uh, sit by. And as far as yourself is concerned, one should be in that mood. So it's, it's very difficult, but here Prabhupada says here, but if one is always absorbed in this chanting, keeping this mood in mind, then automatically these qualities will develop. Uh, a person advanced in spiritual consciousness through the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra need not practice to develop it separately for a devotee develops all good qualities simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra regularly. Uh, and, and then as uh, Lord Chaitanya goes on to describe about not asking anyone for anything. A devotee should be very simple. And uh, Mani Manda was talking about this yesterday very nicely. Very simple, easily satisfied. Easy. Now, in the Kali Yuga, people are not so easily satisfied. They're very difficult to satisfy. You know, sometimes we say, oh, they're, they're such and such, she's very difficult. Or he's very difficult. They're very difficult. They're not, they can't, they're never satisfied. I mean, they, they want this, even if they get it, they're still not satisfied. They want it, they're never, so Vaishnava's not like that. Prabhupada, one time he gave a definition. There's many definitions of Vaishnava. He said, Vaishnava, uh, he is very humble. The Vaishnava can just, uh, if there's any service to do, the, the Vaishnava will gladly do it. And or he can just sit and chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Just like that. Very satisfied. So, uh, not difficult, easily satisfied, very simple, uh, very straightforward, not duplicious. Uh, you know, these things are, uh, these qualities are described uh, in uh, um, Bhagavad Gita also by Krishna and also in Srimad Bhagavatam and other Shastras. So, but mainly, uh, you know, to keep this chanting and keep chanting your whole life, you have to develop these qualities. So, of course, the Yajna is Harinam, Harinam and Harinam, Hare Krishna Mantra, that is the Yajna. But to keep performing the Yajna, one has to have these types of uh, qualities or develop these qualities and have this type of attitude and mentality. So Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Uh, I've gone a little bit over, but maybe we've got time for one question. No? Hare Krishna, Jai, all glory to Silla Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Gopriminandi, Hare Hare Bo.